You know what? The only person that matters is Seedu believing in Seedrew. I I agree. I, I, I it's think not a full-on mirror, though. I believe in Seedrew, and they're going to be once again going with Trill on that Demon Hunter. They're going to be looking for a mana advantage. Once again, hyper-aggressive plays here coming in from the boys as Goreki charges in, gets the race done, Cyclone onto Seedu. Maz already completely on the back foot. We've seen him go down very early on against Chun-Li and Specs him before. Are they going to be able to take him down, Sid? Iron Bark trade by Seedu at the end of that crowd control chain should be enough for Mez to stabilize. Smexen now getting counter-aggressed, and of course, Trill is going to be targeting Gareki on that healer, likely start to finish, looking for as many mana rifts as possible. Obviously, the Demon Hunter brings good sustain. It gives good late-game advantage, but the Windwalker definitely brings a lot more punch, and with that Mortal Wounds effect, a 25% healing reduction becomes very effective in dampening it, killing the Death Knight. So, the boys definitely still have opportunities there, but they need to make it into dampening with Gareki having mana. If they can't make it into dampening with Gorecki having mana, then they're going to get overwhelmed and they're going to get swarmed. So far, Gorecki has a decent lead, actually, over Sidu. Sidu trying to cross the map, gets intercepted with crowd control. Trill trying to run down Gorecki. Mez maybe even trying to look at, give some attention to Gorecki as well, at least sending his ghoul along with Trill to chase him down. Gorecki running Feral Affinity is a lot more vulnerable to damage if they can stay on targets. Greki needs to try and get control of Trill, trying to use Cyclone, but Trill line of sights it at the pillar. Greki realizes that's not going to work, so he moves back into center field to secure his Cyclone, and Trill was unable to dodge. Good repositioning from Greki. Sidu now getting hunted a bit. Pressure's on. Yep, definitely. Sidu could be in some trouble. He still has Trinket and Iron Bark. There's a little bit of backup there by Mez, trying to keep the snares up on Smexen and Chun Li. Sidu leaping away, but Smexen still all over him. Sidu responds with the thorns, trying to get Smexen to back up just a little bit. Mez with really good backup. Grip on the Chun Li, chains of ice, as well as the asphyxiate's done. That by Sidu more than enough time to stabilize, but mana for both of these healers is relatively equal. Yeah, mana is evening out. Ooh, imprison on Innervate. Gorecki, that's gonna hurt his efficiency. Mana Rift timed out as well. That's just burning the lead now in favor of Method Orange, but not nearly as significant of a lead as I was really expecting. And the boys definitely bring a ton of damage. Maybe the highest damage of any melee cleave that we see in tournaments. Maybe the pumpers could go toe to toe, but big damage on Trill. He trades out Blur, that reduces damage and allows him to dodge some attacks, but even still very low on health, having now used Iron Bark on top of it. Mana is in favor of the boys, despite Trill bringing in that Mana Rift. Pressure is in favor of the boys, and the, for all the folks in chat that bet for the boys, I'm starting to think that you guys are right. Well, maybe. See you caught into a Cyclone. He still has his Trinket, Mez, and Trill. A little bit vulnerable in this situation. Chun-Li has been most of the pressure point for the boys in this matchup. Method Orange have been targeting him down relentlessly, but he still has most of his defensives. So he's going to be feeling quite healthy. Trill still trying to chase down Gorecki, but with that bash Cyclone, Gorecki should be managed to escape just a little bit. If he can re-stealth here, it's really going to be up to Mez to make sure he can shut down that drink. In the meantime, Chun-Li and Smexen looking for some pressure onto Sidu. Got caught out of form, forced to trinket and leap away. But he managed to hold on to his bark skin, his iron bark, and with that mass entanglement, you can see Smexen and Chun Li just stuck in place. Yeah, I mean, if it's a healer race and you're playing Feral Affinity, you're going to be really weak. And Gorecki is already just starting to feel that pain. Finally able to punish that build. Let's see if Trill can time the mana rift at the end of this in prison. Hits it, burns more mana away, but it's actually still even, which is really surprising at this point. We're not even into Dipney. Now, let's see if Gorecki can escape using thorns, snaring up Trill and reflecting some damage to him as well. Gorecki with that Feral Affinity, another bonus. It's on top of just being able to go and cat farm stun and do damages that he gets to move extra fast. He actually moves faster than a demon hunter in travel form. So Greki's main mode of transportation is that travel form to avoid the attacks of Trill as much as possible. Line of sight, drop, combat, re-stealth, and then look for a stun into a cyclone, something along those lines. And in the meantime, it seems like the boys want to try and gun down Sidu, but I don't think they're going to win Whoa. that race. Instead, now switching their attention to Chun Li. He's got fortified brew, iron bark. He's likely to survive. Well-timed Ursul's Vortex there, pulling away at least one gap closer from Chun-Li. Fist of Fury now denying any sort of reconnect from Mez. Chun-Li still low on health. Mana even on both sides here in game number one. We're in a best of five series. One of these teams is going to be going home. Yeah, Mez lower. Are they going to be able to take him down? Sidu has to respond appropriately. 
Mez's self heal should be enough to stay alive. CD throwing in some heal over time effects as well, but in the meantime, Gorecki's the one that is in trouble. Mana Rift landing once again. Can Trill to solo Gorecki at this point in the match? He has no mana left. Chun Li increasingly vulnerable as well. Gorecki trying to create some space and get away, but Trill has just been hunting him down. Now swapping over onto Chun Li. He's got a few buttons to survive. Trill drops out the darkness to assist Sidu. Chun Li gets some heals on himself. Touch of Karma now available. He's going to be feeling relatively safe, but Gorecki with no mana left. Trill and Mez, they're looking to close out this game. Yeah, that Feral Affinity finally being punished here by Method Orange as they try and take Gorecki down. Sidu on top of Gorecki, trying to Ursul's Vortex him back in line of sight, but they're just struggling to connect. One Maledict does move in. Sidu's trying Sidu to kill him. <laughs> kill him in bear form. Maybe Sidu can just smack him down. Fist of Fury, Gorecki refuses to die. Even zero mana left in the tank. Holds on by a threat, now caught into another stun. This mana rift just surely going to close the game as Gorecki's totally tapped. KO, Method Orange take game one. Well played by Method Orange, and I feel like we've had so many firsts this tournament. We, we had some... Sidu to choke on Druid. O other than that, I don't think this composition was a smart pick on their part. They already got to see it earlier in the, the day with the way that it played with ABC against Method Black, and it didn't work at all, so uh, I'm just not sure if it's going to here. Maybe Gorecki as an X-Factor. Perhaps he's playing Feral Affinity, and he can add in some extra damage. That's really the only differences I see in terms of play of any significance. Thugonomics already heavily behind. Look at that necrotic strike. Huge absorption of all incoming healing applied by Smexen very early on. Gorecki's going to have to tax a ton of mana potentially to heal that through. Likely looking to use Innervate here soon in terms of efficiency. Deciding not to just yet, but the pressure is still mounting. Yeah, a lot of damage here on Thugonomics. Gorecki not able to really afford to sit down, resell, and go for a drink. Thugonomics can counter pressure trill just a little bit, but He's going to be able to shrug off most of his damage in Metamorphosis, just be able to heal himself up as long as he's doing consistent damage. I think he should be able to survive, but kind of caught in midfield right now. Gorecki looking for a drink. Sidu trying to chase him down and keep him in combat, but Smexin manages to find a Hex. Trill now caught into a Mortal Coil with Mez. Good pressure here from the boys onto Trill, but not enough damage to force Trill and Mez to play defensive just yet in the game. Sidu's done his job keeping Gorecki in combat, but... With Gorecki now, still trying to get out of line of sight, trying to get out of combat. And Mez, with this fire beam, he has his pet parked on one side of the pillar, basically sawing everyone in half and keeping Gorecki in combat. All right, Gorecki is running that Feral Affinity, and we saw Trill punish it in game number one. I can only imagine that's what he's going to want to do here in game number two. But when paired up with an Elemental Shonen and a Destruction Warlock, if they leave those classes open to free cast, it could be punishment. Thugonomics gets one Chaos Bolt on Trill. He's going to duck around the corner, catch a couple of heals from Sidu, and then get back into the fight. Thugonomics is looking to ramp up. We've seen a lot of Destruction Warlock, but we have not gotten to see a lot of Thugonomics. Perhaps he can bring some of that experience. He's been playing it uh, for certainly the longest on Destruction Warlock. I, I feel like he's goes all the way back to when Arena even began. So Thugonomics would be the most experienced Destruction Warlock in the competition. Already building up tons of pressure here onto Mez. Good coordination with Smexin, netting them powerful defensive cooldowns and building themselves potential. Yep, Thugonomics has definitely been playing Destro since the dawn of time. Even I Old man used to play against him in arena tournaments. Definitely just holding it down on that Destruction Warlock for a very long time. The only other thing I've really seen Thugonomics play often is the Demon Hunter. Those are the two things he primarily focuses on. And when Destruction Warlocks are good, he is a nightmare to play against a very experienced tournament player. Gorecki now caught into a stun. Barkskin was forced out. This is good pressure. Triple Maledict coming in from Method Orange as they're looking to take down Gorecki. Trill, though, getting counter aggressioned forced to uh, play a little bit defensive here. Blur has already been used. Needs to be careful. Sidu trying to pick him up as they continue the pressure on the Thugonomics, but if you allow Thugonomics to just do his thing, that is a very dangerous move. Method Orange in a good position, though. Gorecki has to be careful. He's running behind the pillar, getting caught in stuns, and if Mezen, Trill, and Sidu can all do damage to him during those moments, out of line of sight of Thugonomics and Smexen, there's not too much the boys are going to be able to do to help Gorecki out. Gorecki running that Feral Affinity to get bonus movement speed to kite, sneak away, and maybe get away for drinks. Sidu now getting counter-aggressed and caught. Forced to use Glider's Medallion. Still taking huge pain. Able to retreat and recover. I was trying to say there before Sidu almost went down was that Gorecki's Feral Affinity is almost a bit of a bait. 
He is obviously the priority target because he does not have Guardian Affinity to reduce damage or Frenzied Regeneration to recover from big bursts. But if they're chasing Gareki out in the open, then Thugonomics and Smexen are just going to kill them. They, they can't spend that much time chasing him and he can get away with it. And then later on, if they ignore Gareki, he just drinks a ton of mana. He can re-stealth and stun up players and then look for kills. And I do think that Feral Affinity has been what has enabled Gareki victory time and time again. Definitely good usage of it. Now he's just chasing Sidu around in cat form, attacking him a tad bit, maybe looking for a Cyclone. Cycloning Sidu, Trill the target. Where is Trill gonna go? Apparently just straight for Gareki again, trying to get as many mana rifts as possible, but Gareki did manage to sit down for a drink and regenerate mana. And as long as Gareki can keep this up, I, I do actually think that boys may be able to overcome this. Yeah, definitely a possibility here. And this is the kind of flexibility we wanted to see from the boys. So far during this tournament season, we really only see them run that Windwalker Death Knight setup. I think having this as an answer gives them a ton of flexibility uh, in these different competitions, especially going up against a team like Method Orange. We want to see that diversity from these rosters, and this is definitely a good showing here for the boys. Double Mortal Coil once again coming in as Trill gets a, a lightning lasso oh. outside of that anti-magic zone, getting no value, huge damage. Thugonomics pulls the trigger on his unending resolve Dark Soul, really not afraid to get aggressive here in this match. Will it pay off is the question. That's the thing, with that much experience, Thugonomics can try and gauge the risk versus reward, but in that case, the reward was certainly not worth the risk, and now Thugonomics will be behind. Gareki needs to try and stabilize that loss of defense. Fortunately, we're not that deep into dampening, so Thugonomics is likely to recover to see that unending resolve again. So taking that risk this early on isn't totally going to end the match for their team, but it is going to make it annoying for Gareki to accomplish the things that he's trying to do with moving, moving around so frequently. Uh -oh. In the meantime, Cyclone Chain on to Sidu nets them a darkness. Ooh. Now a Cyclone on Trill, and Gareki is easily the best aggressive druid in the game right now with both Feral Affinity and Cyclone usage. sidu has been getting caught in too many hexes. This is now the second hex, and with no defensive cooldowns for Trill, deeper into dampening, a move like that is going to lose them the game. Yeah, maybe just now. Trill's still low. Sidu trying to play catch up. Trill getting destroyed. Gladiator safeguard Prox. They're spending a lot of time uh -oh. on Gareki. They might be able to take him down. He's on top of the gateway. Gareki manages to sneak away, but Trill in hot pursuit. Chasing him around this pillar. Gareki needs to get into the open once again. Smexen and Thugonomics need to be able to cast to generate the counter pressure that they need. You can see Mez is kind of stuck in the open, forced to grip Thugonomics on that Chaos Bolt. He's been taking too much damage. Oh. Lightning lasso on Mez. There's a pounce on Sidu. If Gareki can get the full Cyclone, Mez could definitely be in some trouble. Basically forced to use every single defensive cooldown he has available. Gareki trying to entangling Root and then hibernate Sidu when he shapeshifts into form. Top level Druid play there, but Sidu isn't getting caught. Now Thugonomics falls behind. Sidu secures crowd control onto Gareki. Although he was able to pre-iron bark, soaking up all of the damage. And that risk that Thugonomics took earlier, that chance for Method Orange to kill him is slowly slipping away with 50 se more seconds away on that unending resolve. Thugonomics is, I believe, looking stable. Finally catching some Chaos Bolts here, trying to force Trill off of his back. Greki looking for Hibernate, Sidu dodges it. They go for a Cyclone, Mez denies it. Good teamwork on the side of Method Orange, but Lightning Lasso and Chaos Bolt might just be enough to take Trill down. He needs a ton of healing, he needs it now. Big Earth Shock. Trill almost getting knocked down here in game number two. The boys look strong. Gareki's strategies look good. He's got a huge lead established, but moving on to a smaller map, does this same strategy work is the question. They still haven't even won this game. I'm not sold yet. Yeah. I'm definitely not sold either, but things are looking reasonably good for the boys. Method Orange still not out of it yet, but Gareki was such a huge mana lead. We normally see Method Orange close out games by ooming or getting the enemy healer out of mana in a match, but they haven't been able to do so so far. Right now, Smex and Thugonomics really bullying Trill as he tries to chase down Gareki. This is similar to the double destruction warlock composition we've seen. You really need two spellcasters that can punish 
the enemy team when you have a demon hunter just running at your druid the entire game and they've been uh -oh. able to do it big setup here on trill he trinkets out he's trying to avoid some of this damage so you caught into the lightning lasso that's forced to use the anti-magic zone thugonomics once again he is not afraid to get aggressive with that unending resolve he is confident in his ability to tank damage see you caught into a full hex Kill could be in some trouble, but this may backfire on Thugonomics. All right, another crowd control by Greg, but Sidhu reverses it. Now Thugonomics is in trouble. He's been taking a lot of risks here in game number two, and it may be an opening for Method Orange to get a kill. Thugonomics securing that demonic gateway, trying to escape to center field, bait his opponents into midfield for Smexen to rain down Lava Burst, but now getting stunned, unable to connect, and Trill has shifted his strategy instead, mana rifting for damage onto Thugonomics to just try and kill him here deep in dampening. There's no deep defense left. Thugonomics on the run. Greki instead tries to go for crowd control. Will he get the Cyclone? He's not able to get the Cyclone. Sidhu now connects the heals. Greki is now the one who is behind heavily with Thugonomics barely holding on. All of the risks that he's taken are ultimately going to cost him the game here in game number two. I do believe there's so much damage as Mez leads the charge. Smexen doing whatever he can with a couple of healing surges and hexes tossed out to try and slow down the pace to give Greki more room to breathe. But Still just faltering, imprisoned, now secured. Thugonomics in desperation, spamming Drain Life. Fake cast the interrupt, but now gets bashed. I don't think he's going to be able to make it out alive. Smexen and Gorecki both tunneling as many heals as they can, but it will not be enough. Method Orange moved to match point. That they do. Thugonomics being so bold with his un and Well played so far by the boys, but this could be the last map that we do see from them. They're getting barbecued by the people on the desk and Method Orange. Oh, in me. the arena, except for Ven, he's a nice guy. Yeah, rookie wouldn't barbecue a fly. Yeah, he's, he's vegan. That's actually <laughs> right, I wouldn't. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sidhu caught into the incapacitate, and this is what I was afraid of for him. Chun-Li looking to get really aggressive. Stormarth and Fire's already been used. There's a full leg sweep. A lot of damage on Sidhu. Safeguard has been procced. He's used Bark Skin and Iron Bark. The only thing he has left is his Trinket. Trill might have to drop out of Darkness to keep him alive if they can continue the assault, but it just doesn't look like they're able to. Mez gets knocked downstairs. They switch their attention to him, looking to pull even more cooldowns. Will they find it? Mez needs to be careful. Sidhu's in crowd control. Greki gets the Cyclone. Mez is refusing to make a trade, disrespecting the damage here in game number three. He's incredibly far ahead in the series, but the pressure is still mounting. The boys are all over the place. Sidhu is starting to struggle to recover. Tranquility to apply an extra heal over time effect, trying to boost that healing through his mastery, but even still, I was I've dead. never seen a Death Knight take this much damage in the tournament setting. Mez is still just barely clinging to life. If they can connect, maybe they take out, they stun chun -Li. they stall it out. Gorecki moves in, stuns the heal. Is he gonna get the Cyclone? Gorecki goes for it, he gets gripped on it by Mez. Beautifully done by Mez, denying that crowd control chain. Now an imprisonment on a Gorecki. Mez still low. Double leg sweep on the Sidhu, on the Mez. Mez breaks out with his trinket, trying to survive desperately with his death strikes as much as he can. Tons of pressure here for the boys. In terms of mana, they have a massive lead. This aggressive strategy seems to be working out quite nicely for the boys. Still want to see death grips into double leg sweep. Sidhu with a ni nice fake cast there. Now Chun Li rolls over and Spearhand strikes him. Ring of Peace downstairs. Chun Li trying to carry. Smexen follows up with a stun. Gorecki chains that into a cyclone. Crowd control chain basically perfect, but Death Strike more than enough for Mess to survive. Yep, and Trill had a really nice chaos over there. Chun Li was trying to get aggressive with his Fists of Fury. That's going to be one of the hardest hitting abilities of Windwalker Monk has. Trill knows that, instantly shut it down with the Chaos Nova, limiting the amount of pressure that they really have on Mez. And ever since the beginning moments of the game, Mez seems to be doing quite fine in terms of health. And as soon as I say that, he starts getting low. Pounce stun once again onto Sidhu into a paralysis by Chun Li. Can they continue the pressure? Mez manages to stabilize. He is now completely full. He's looking healthy. And I don't know, Sid, do you think they should continue this pressure onto Mez? It doesn't seem to be working any longer. I think deeper into dampening, it, it will. Maybe they're just feeling like, hey, we got really close to killing him. We got his Icebound Fortitude at this point. It's maybe sunken cost fallacy. They just feel like they have to keep going after Mez. Both Druids caught in stuns, although Trill is trying to go after Gorecki. Gorecki trades Barkskin to just try and be efficient. Gorecki isn't looking to try and make effective trades. He's looking to make efficient trades and maximize his mana to try and outdo Sidhu, his Druid counterpart here. They're on match point. If Method Orange can take this, they will advance to the finals for a rematch against the Super Frogs where 
potentially some destruction, double destruction derby will be available for them. I'm very curious to see how that plays out if the Super Frogs even go in with it blind. Chun-Li though now getting bursted there on match point, has Touch of Karma, refusing to make the trade even at 15% health remaining. Chun-Li holds on to it for a later date. Yep, Chun-Li will be able to survive with the Turbo Fist, Fists of, Pe uh, Fists of Fury. Preventing a lot of that damage. There's a full cyclone secured by Gorecki. Trill trying to just completely shut down Gorecki, burn him out of mana. And his mana is not doing well. Finally, in this matchup, Method Orange does have the mana advantage. Chun Li with a lot of cooldowns, not necessarily the greatest target right now, but once Gorecki's boom, I think Chun Li could potentially eventually fall. There's good defense here by the boys, really slowing down Trill's push onto Gorecki as he's looking to sit down for a drink. Both druids are. <laughs> Sidun might not get shut down, though. I think he's actually going to be able to regen a decent amount of mana. I don't know why, but watching both abominations just walking behind each other made me think of like a ghoulish conga line. They're trying to chase down their <laughs> targets and kill them, but they're just getting kited and unable to attack. Mana even at this point, but that isn't where you want to be if you're Method Orange with this mana rift strategy. You do want to be significantly ahead, so potential for the boys in this fight to stay in the series. Uh oh, bracket. Sidu gets caught. The boys go for oh, the no. aggressive strategy. It's do or die. Take down C do or go home. Do they have enough damage to do it? Iron Bark appears to be enough for C do to hold on with that bear form, but they're still giving chase. Yep, C do no trinket. He does have bark skin. The next stun could be scary, but he did manage to hold on to a little bit of his defensive cooldowns. And Trill, of course, he still has his trinket and darkness. That's going to be very important if they do find an all in. In the meantime, Gorecki getting taken down. Trill and Mez looking to close out this game and clean sweep the boys. Gorecki barely hanging on for dear life with bark and Iron Bark as he's looking to make an escape. <laughs> Will he be able to do it? See, you just smacking Gorecki as he walks by to try and take him out. Somehow Gorecki's still alive. Mez now getting counter pressured. Icebound Fortitude forced to be trade on his part. That's a powerful cooldown, but he doesn't seem to care. It's time to take Gorecki out here. Method Orange want to go to that finals. They want a first place finish, and Gorecki is really the last thing standing in their way as he's trying to kite, but there's no mana left in the tank. Mez and Trill both get caught in a leg sweep. Chun Li peeling for days. Gorecki gets innervate. He gets a couple free heals. He's trying to sneak away from the fight, maybe sit down for a drink. Chun Li will gladly trade Touch of Karma for mana on Gorecki, but I don't think that he's ultimately going to find it with the demon sight that Trill has. He can just uh -oh. immediately stop it. Now with crowd control on Gorecki, Chun Li is alone, caught into a fell eruption, tons of damage. Will Iron Bark be enough here at 7% Tampany with no mana left in the tank? Looks like it might be as Gorecki and Chun Li both kite away to stay alive in the tournament. Yeah, but Chun Li with no touch of Karma for another minute and not playing Fortifying Brew. He's a relatively squishy target here for Trill and Mez to try to take down another all-in attempt on the Sidu. Nicely done by Sidu in bear form with Barskin. He's fine. Going to be able to tank through this damage, I assume. Now trying to get away once again. Might need darkness from Trill. I don't know if he has it in him to stabilize himself at this point with Smexon still all over him. Chun Li trying to ch chase him down, but Mez making it really difficult, backing up Sidu with the Chains of Ice spam onto Chun Li. Sidu still trying to kite away, potentially could be forced to use the Iron Bark, and he does. Will he hold on to his trinket? No, he doesn't want to mess around. He wants the bonus healing from that Iron Bark, but Sidu still in a lot of trouble. Rake Stun comes in from Gorecki. The boys looking to claim game number three and stay in this tournament. Sidu getting lower, and I don't think he's going to be able to survive. He just doesn't Woo! have any healing left. Runs out of the dark. Sidney so actually got gripped out of the darkness, unfortunately, but there could be a cross kill here, Sid. Uh, I think it's unlikely as Chun Li transcendences to safety. The all in on Sidu works. It's all or nothing, and the boys managed to pull it off. Can they do it two more times? Can the boys get a reverse sweep? Method Orange isn't going to be able to get to 3-0. The boys have their opening, but you could see that was still a very close now open. That joke is never going to get old, just like the fitted final resting place. <laughs> fitting, fitted yeah. final resting place. Fitting final resting point. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sidu into the incapacitate. What are they going to do? I was a little bit scared for Sidu on this map. He actually trinkets out. 
you really respecting the touch of death. He was in bear form. He was pretty healthy there, but he offs the trinket, use the iron bark, trying to avoid an all in here from Smexin, Chun Li, and Gorecki. It looks like Mezzan Trail, they're looking for their all own all in onto Gorecki. Which one of these druids is going to fall first? Yeah, it's going to be a re healer race here, and the boys are still on match points, and the pressure is on. Will the feral affinity be enough for Gorecki to be able to escape here on hook point? I think he may should have should have considered opting out of it on this small map as it is likely still a healer race. Sidhu now losing that race very low on health. Trill tries to reconvene with him potentially to trade darkness. Sidhu tries to kite, gets grip back into the fight. Trill protects him with a double stun, trying to slow down this fire from igniting. Will it be enough? Chun Li now trades Touch of Karma to go all in and aggressive. In the meantime, Method Orange shifts some attention to Gorecki as well. Two members of the team, but the boys are dangerously low. We're not even into dampening at this point, but they are heavily far behind. Yeah, Kurecki moves in, looking for some damage on the Sidu, manages to find the Cyclone, but Sidu should be completely fine. Gorecki's doing quite well on mana. He's actually ahead of Sidu at this point. Trill hasn't had the time or the opportunity to really get those consistent mana risks we've seen from him. Chun-Li getting targeted down once again, and I think it could potentially be a mistake for them to be on Chun-Li this long. If he's kiting well, Karma's coming up in 50 seconds. I think he should be able to survive, and Sidhu is becoming increasingly more vulnerable, although he does have Bark Skin rotating back up, as well as the Iron Bark. He has the Trinket for the Touch of Death, and I think that's really what Sidhu wants to do. He wants to line up his Trinket with the Touch of Death, that should be, in theory, the scariest moment for him in this match. Sidhu getting stunned up by Gorecki. Trying to support the team and allow them to reconnect. But with that feral affinity, he's vulnerable. Trill wants to take advantage of that, gunning him down here on hook point. Could definitely be a quick finish to this series if the boys make even one mistake. It will be their tournament lives on the line. Sidhu doing a good job rotating through defense at this point and keeping up counter aggression on Chun Li. Gorecki goes for a restealth while Chun Li is getting blasted. Able to come back in the fight and trade Iron Bark just in the nick of time to stabilize. Sidhu now gets cycloned up by Gorecki. The boys go after a different target, that being Mez, but I think it's unlikely they stay on him for very long, at least not before dampening. They're spending quite a bit of damage on him. Chun Li gets Maledix committed to him. He's in a bit of danger. They grip Sidhu in for a double stun. Trades Bark Skin as he is not in bear form. Does not want to fall behind, but Gorecki then follows up with another stun. This Feral oh, no. Affinity aggressively is paying its weight in gold for Gorecki. Even though it's a risky decision, it's definitely one that has paid off in the past. Will it keep paying off is now the question. Yet Sidhu, he did use or did get the darkness there by Trill, but it was denied by Chun Li instantly with that Ring of Peace, that zone denial. Really excellently done by Chun Li. Now Chun Li caught into the stun. Good pressure here from Mez as he's looking to take down Chun Li and really limit his capability offensively onto Sidhu. And it's been working out quite well so far. Mez can grip Chun Li on his fist of fury, keep up chains of ice the entire game. Ultimately, I feel like Sidhu should be able to kite away. Really, the only opportunity for the boys is they need to take down Sidhu in stun locks. And outside of those stuns, I think Sidhu's going to be able to get away. Here's an innervate from Sidhu looking to top off Mez. Gorecki potentially looking for a drink. Did he find anything? No, he did not. Now Method Orange secure a mana lead. Yeah, that mana lead could be critical here to their victory to get a rematch against the Super Frogs in the grand finals of the North American region. A lot of points on the line to qualify to the spring finals as well as a crew to qualify to potentially the world championship. Oh! Sidhu is getting crushed under the weight of the boys here in game number four. And we are going to a game number five. Method Orange now face elimination. Holy guacamole. Ticket straight to homeland. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's match point. Game five here in the lower bracket finals. Who will advance to face the Super Frogs to claim the title of King of Spring Cup number three? We will be finding out momentarily. Gorecki getting gripped into the fight. Triple stun secured for Method Orange. Definitely a good start. Not a bad start at all. Looks like Gorecki's going to be taking most of the damage, and this is the positioning we wanted to see from Sidhu. He's far away. He's just playing it safe, making it difficult for Chun-Li, for Smexin, to find these swaths that we saw on Dalaran Sewers and Hook Point. I think on this map, Method Orange definitely should be looking good. All right, can they do it is the question. They were up 2-0. They basically had this series in the bag, but the boys managed to battle it back and now bring it to a Game 5. The tension is rising. Everything on the line here. Both these teams, the boys looking to continue their first place in terms of point earnings. Method Orange looking to overthrow the ladder and have a better seating moving forward to qualify for the spring finals. 
Trill getting rooted up. Gorecki on the run, looking to try and get a re-stealth here very shortly and then go for some stuns, I can only imagine. Trill jumping across the battlefield. That double jump definitely paying off as he's able to cl uh, climb up those balconies without needing to go around them. In the meantime, Sidu getting gripped into the fight as the boys want to go after the healer. Ring of Peace mistimed by about one second and Sidu is able to escape. Yep, Sidu manages to get away, and this is what I'm talking about. Now Sidu has so much freedom to get away. Gorecki, he can't escape from a Demon Hunter. Trill is all over him in this matchup. Chun-Li and Smexen, they're forced onto Mez, which is not exactly the best target. Pre-dampening, Mez is going to be very effective at keeping himself alive. Another grip, asphyxiate on Sidu. Gets a little scary in these stuns, but if Sidu can manage to hop away, get out of line of sight, Mez can use his Death Grip as well as Chains of Ice to really limit Chun-Li's capability of sticking on him. All right, let's see what Sidu can do. A lot on him right now. Uh -oh. Reki getting gunned down in the back line. Will he just fall? He's trying to cut. He gets gripped back into the fight. He's running that Feral Affinity. He's got no real defense. They're both just staying right on top of him. If Mez and Trill can keep gunning this down, they may be able to net a kill. Sidu has to deal with pretty equivalent pressure on the opposite side, but he's got Guardian Affinity to beef himself up. But even still with the Guardian Affinity struggling for, to make the trades, so are the boys going to be able to close this out? Trill has Darkness, but he doesn't want to have to overlap it with Barkskin. He may well have to if Chun-Li and Smexen can stay on target. Smexen gripping Sidu back into the fight. Ursul's Vortex put down for Sidu as he tries to escape with that dash, but unable to really find anywhere safe to hide. Now trying to escape across the map. A touch of death is ticking, about to explode. No defense for one second. Gets stunned right before it. Now forced to use a Gladiator's Medallion on top of that Iron Bark just to stay in the fight. And if this keeps being a healer race, I'm not sure who's going to take it. I really want Mez to just help Sidu a lot more. I don't think running after Gorecki in the game is is the, pl is the play to actually win. Sidu's going to be a little bit scared if he doesn't constantly have Chains of Ice on Chun-Li and Smex. And Mez will be backing up Sidu now. And this is what I want to see. Just have faith in Trill to chase down Gorecki, keep his mana low, and eventually burn him out of mana. But Sidu doesn't really have much of a lead right here. Trill now landing a mana rift onto Gorecki, managing to find it. Sidu still feeling very healthy now that Mez is actually helping him out. You can see the death grip on the Fists of Fury really limiting the offensive capabilities of Chun-Li in this matchup, especially when he's trying to connect onto Sidu. I don't want to ever see Mez leave Chun -Li, or leave Sidu alone with Chun-Li and Smexen again. Although, Mez now taking quite a bit of pressure. Sidu does have the Iron Bark if he needs to respond with it. As he gets gripped in, he needs to try to get away out of this. I think he should be fine. He uses Bark Skin and Iron Bark. Another Maledict's going to be thrown in there by Gorecki on the CD, but CD should be able to easily heal through it, but doesn't want to leave Mez behind. In the meantime, Chun-Li getting low. There's a double stun. Chun-Li with no touch of Karma. Method Orange could send Method, or sorry, the boys out of this tournament. There's a lot of pressure for both teams in this situation. Gorecki has committed both Iron Bark and Bark Skin as well. Both Druids really don't have too much left to work with. I mean, it's game five. Everything is on the line here. Who is going to falter? Where are the mistakes going to be made? We haven't even gotten into dampening and both Druids are basically tapped on mana. Defensive rotations are starting to dwindle and wither away. At this point, it's still anyone's match. Anyone could take it, and you don't want to go anywhere but here. Mez getting bursted. Gorecki secures crowd control. Mez falls behind. Sidu makes the trade to stay alive. Now Chun-Li with Fist of Fury to deny any sort of counter-aggression. Well-timed with that Turbo Fist honor talent, parrying all the incoming attacks. Mez opting to just try and height and retreat. Method Orange are on defense. Yeah, Gorecki trying to sneak away out of combat, but Trill manages to shut that down. But mana in favor of uh, Gorecki at this point. Sidu's sitting down for a drill. Oh, he missed it! Unfortunately, but Sidu wasn't able to find any bit of mana. Gorecki getting gripped in. Good pressure here for Method Orange. Can they take Gorecki down? Now an all-in attempt on the Sidu. Touch of death has been committed. Sidu basically just using his bark skin, trying to stay alive. He gets gripped back in. Darkness gets dropped out by Trill, but Sidu's still in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, after that, what's he, he's going to have to iron bark on top of it. He's trying to escape by kiting, but I don't think he's going to be able to kite. He's doing his best with the dash. chun -Li portals right back on top of him, trying to stay on target. Trill gets rooted up. He's not able to stay on Gorecki. Gorecki sneaks away. What is Gorecki going to get to do with this attempt? Not able to find a re-stealth, no stun for him. Now caught into a Feller Option Mana Rift, who Dampening has engaged. Mana almost completely tapped on both sides now at this point, but the defense for the boys looks a little bit more solid in terms of cooldowns available. Gorecki doing everything that he can to avoid the fight. Sidu gets nice Ring of Peace on Sidu's jump. Chun-Li trying to stay on target. 
it, not able to move right now, just caught in a root. Sidu stunned, paralysis to hold him in place to catch up. Maybe crowd control and switch targets. The boys are trying to mix it up here into dampening. Catch method orange off guard and take down Mez. Iron Bark forced to be traded here to stabilize Mez. Deeper into, deeper into dampening though, Iron, Iron Bark becomes way less effective, unlikely to be enough to survive. It's still too close to call. Yeah, this is one of the most close matchups we've seen all day. Smexon now getting bursted down as well. Chun Li securing a full leg sweep. Mez Trinkets out, still just trying to kite, trying to get away from Chun Li. Buy himself a little bit of time. Chun Li throwing in a fist of fury. Smexon getting low. Sidu trying to assist Mez with that Gladiator's Mallet. Gorecki completely out of mana. Sidu out of mana. Both Druids potentially looking for drinks, but I think it's unlikely either one of these Druids finds one. Full cycle now secured by Gorecki onto Sidu. Mez left by himself. Sidu trinkets out to try to keep him alive. Mez is forced to use the um, anti magic shell. Sidu does have Iron Bark as well as Innervate. Opts to use the Innervate. Does he have the healing here to keep Mez alive? Not using the Iron Bark is huge greed from Sidu. Finally committing it. Smexon could be in some trouble. Gorecki gets caught into the imprisonment. Which one of these two Death Knights is going to fall first? I mean, Mez has defense rotating back up, and Sidu has just the tiniest bit more mana left in the tank, so it's starting to look good for Method Orange as dampening heats up. Gorecki caught into a stun. Smexon getting tunneled out. Mez has to trade, though. The pressure is in favor of the boys. They're swinging it back in their favor. How much longer can Method Orange stay alive? Now Chun Li goes for the Touch of Karma. They're just going to go for an all in kill on Mez at this point double leg sweep denying any sort of heals and defense there's no darkness for 36 more seconds there's nothing left for 10 i don't even know if it'll be enough when we make it to that point any magic shield is it going to be enough cedar's caught in crowd control iron bark available chun li gets gripped back into the fight he doesn't really have much grecky is trying to sneak away and regenerate some mana i don't think he was able to find any now he's completely tapped on mana dampening hitting 20 percent at this point trill snags a double stun another mana rift to combine together to complete Completely tap the mana bar of Gorecki. Chun Li with limited defense. Mez now with more. This is constantly back and forth. Yep, both teams playing out of their minds in this matchup as both teams face elimination. This is such a close match. Both Druids still out of mana. Chun Li has Touch of Karma rotating back up in around 30 seconds. Mez just uses Icebound Fortitude, so that's not going to be available for quite some time. Fist of Fury comes in on the Mez. Sidu looking to deflect the damage with the Iron Bark. There's a full Asphyxiate stun. Do they have the damage to take Mez down? Chun Li still vulnerable for another 20 seconds. Needs to hold on just a little bit longer. Paralysis now on Sidu. Mez could fall. Chun Li could fall. Trill trying to get the damage out to keep Mez alive. Chun Li forced to run away. He has to hold on. Just another nine seconds. Does he have the nine seconds? to survive with that touch of karma. He's trying his best. It looks like he's going to be able to make it out alive. Now both druids completely tapped. Gorecki actually maybe with a little bit tiny of a lead over Method Orange. Are the boys actually going to be able to climb back into the series? They were down 2-0 in the lower bracket, and now they're about to maybe win three in a row against Method Orange. Unbelievable at this point for the boys as they try to defend their point earning title in that first place position, doing everything they can. Gorecki gets stunned. Chun Li has to trade Touch of Karma. Now, suddenly, that defense lead that they had is basically lost. Chun Li commits a touch of death. It's do or die. Kill Sidu or go home. Will Sidu fall to the pressure? He makes the trade. Everything he's got to stay alive. And now Chun Li doesn't have much to keep going. Uh -oh. Now Chun Li will fall. It was do or die, but oh. Sidu denies the boys here in game five. Oh. <laughs> Potentially fall. Spexon's looking to close out the game. Gorecki with the feral affinity. Can and they take Sidu down. He's in bear form. Beautiful grip there by Mez. Gorecki could potentially get a kill. Smexon trying to reconnect. If they can take Sidu down, they might have the edge in this matchup. Sidu's still completely He's gonna kill it. Gets break stunned by Gorecki. Smexon trying to reconnect, but Gorecki has to keep Smexon alive. Sidu with bear form with the Guardian Affinity should be tanky enough to survive. Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further? further into this tournament. Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.